Hey, everybody. I'm Matt, founder and CEO of Live School, and this is the Live School podcast. Our guest today is Adrian Malone, social skills teacher for grades six to eight and PBIS coach at Langston Chapel Middle School, and that's in Statesboro, Georgia. Nice to see you today. We had some tech issues, but we worked through it. Great, great to have you on. Yes, great to be here. Thank you. So maybe we could start off just like for your school, what's what's kind of the importance of you know PBIS and, and how do you use it as part of your um, overall approach to school? So at our school, our school is is pretty a unique situation. A lot of our schools in our district are Title I schools. Um, so we have a lot of students that, you know, they don't get a lot of things in their household. They have their basic needs that need to be met. And we kind of intertwine some of our incentives around PBIS and what we expect our kids to be able to do. So a lot of our classroom expectations, we call them our chapel wide, our chapel way expectations. So our chapel way expectations are just those basic fundamentals of using positive language and interacting appropriately with our peers and trying to model that in, that environment for them because they may not get that structure and environment in their normal everyday lives outside of our school building. So mm -hmm. we try to work a lot of these leadership skills, responsibility skills, respectful skills into that because mm -hmm. huge gap for our kids. Yeah, absolutely. And what are some of the positive rewards and experiences and things that you've kind of created for students? Yeah, so um, we've done a few different things. So last year we had a whole live school store. So our students, they were able to earn points throughout the month. And then once a month, we had the store where they, we actually got a lot of items donated. They could get little squishmallows because the kids love the squishmallows. I've never had a squishmallow. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know. Apparently, they're these giant, like, squishy stuffed animals. They look like marshmallows, but they call them squishmallows, and they come in all different um, characters, and the kids went crazy over them. So, of course, those were our major big-ticket items. Yeah. But we had things, um, you know, like candies and drinks and, and, and bracelets and earrings and things that they maybe could buy for a loved one with their slot school points because they didn't have any other means to get anything mm -hmm. like that. So um, that went off really well. The students love being able to, to strive for that. And then based off of that, we encourage our teachers to um, create more classroom incentives for that immediate, you know, feedback. So um, a lot of our teachers allow their kids to sit in their teacher chairs or rolly chairs or special seats. So that's one thing that the kids really love is being able to te sit in the teacher's chair. <laughs> <laughs> for points. So our kids like that. They also have a fast pass to get to the front of the lunch line if they need that, get patio time. Um, so really, the teachers have taken ownership over creating their own incentive menu, per se. We call them a menu, create a classroom menu, and they, they know what we're talking about. That is so cool. Yeah. So it's a mix of school-wide and then also in the yes. classroom with teachers. Um, yes. And as in your role, what have been some of the main steps and, you know, approaches you've taken to sort of roll things out, get everyone on board? I mean, it's a big undertaking to get a whole school building, you know, rowing in the same direction with this kind of approach. It is. It is. It's a huge undertaking because um, we we've never done anything like this before. It's new to the district being PBIS focused. So that was a district initiative that like, hey, we're doing this. I don't know how you're going to make it work in your school building, but this is what we're going to do. And we're going to support you the best way that we can. So um, last year we had some district level personnel come in and help us kind of really get the ball rolling with getting students excited about um, the incentives. And mm -hmm. honestly, the students holding the teachers accountable for, am I getting points for that? <laughs> like, did you see me? Did you see me do that? I'm getting points, right? And so that was a good motivator for, for the students, um, really having them also be part of that discussion. So when we come and we talk about our Chapel Way expectations, they don't just come out of thin air. We look at mm -hmm. our behavior referrals. We look at our write-ups. We look at our, our students that are really struggling socially and behavior 
behaviorally and, and what are those needs and what can we do as a school to create an environment that is going to foster what we need it to foster and also provide consistency for our kids. Um, and so a lot of work went into creating our rubric and coming mm -hmm. up with those very targeted um, categories and targeted behaviors. And those are based off of the things that we are seeing happening school wide in years past. So knowing, I think teachers knowing that it wasn't just grasping at straws and it was a very intentional, really helped with that buy-in process. Um, you know, our biggest struggle for us is we, we, in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of teacher turnover. Mm -hmm. yep. And so, you know, every year that that happens, we have to redo and, and get everybody on board again. And it is like starting from scratch. <laughs> and so it, that, that's been the biggest challenge is, is how to handle that turnover and how to get everybody back in the practice of this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. It just keep steady, steady eddy. So um, one of the really neat things that we did this year is we decided that the best way to get our teachers back in the practice was not to say, hey, we need you guys to start awarding, you know, and acknowledging your students positively with live school or verbally, you know, because we do both. Mm -hmm. But it was let's give them specific examples of how mm. and what we're looking for. So on our behavior rubric, it's designed where we have respectful, responsible, and leadership. So um, January, our focus was respectful. So students were looking to earn points in that respectful category Ooh. and the student that earned the most points in that respectful category for the month of January and the teacher that awarded the most points in that category, they got an incentive. They got a, a special reward. And then last month it was responsibility. This month it's leadership. So, you know, in fact, today, one of my kids today who won the one for um, February, he's like, Miss Malone, yes, sir. He, he popped out of the car yelling at me and he was like, I'm cashing in today. And I was like, <laughs> OK, I was like, what do you want to eat? And he said, well, I don't know. And I said, well, you can like I will order. We will order you the food. Like, what do you want to eat? You want Chick-fil-A? You want Zaxby's? Like, what do you want? He's like. I'll eat Chick-fil-A. I said, well, what is your friend one? He's like, I don't know. I haven't thought about a friend. He's like, but I'll find somebody. I said, okay, fine. So, so he was ready to celebrate. He just didn't yeah. know how. So his food just got here about, you know, 10 minutes ago when he's digging out on the patio with his friend eating Chick-fil-A in front of oh, everybody. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. And that was all based on this idea of like a monthly focus area. And it's funny because you brought it up talking about teacher retraining and buy-in. Did that help with teacher onboarding to have those kind of monthly? Yes, courses? because instead of them having to think of, oh my gosh, I have to do live school today. Mm. They said they would hear the morning announcements and it would say, you know, our focus this month mm. is responsibility. You know, students, you can show you're being responsible by, you know, cleaning up after yourself, fishing in chairs, you know, whatever those targeted behaviors were based on a rubric. And that would be the teacher be like, okay, I'm looking for those things. So, so smart. open the door to that conversation. Yep. And again, this, the, the kids do a very good job of holding you accountable as a teacher of like, Miss um, Malone, you saw me, I pushed in that chair. Did you see me pushed in that chair? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yep. yes, we'll give you a last goal point for that. And they're like, yes. <laughs> That's so fun. It's really cool too, because if you're sharing that on the announcements, you're reminding teachers, you're also reminding students at the same time. So it just gets everyone thinking focus. about that focus area. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's really cool. And is that something you do or or another it is? So we have a full team. Um, we have all of our administrators, of course, but then we have about two two teachers per grade level that are responsible for just helping out their teachers, giving them the reminder on their grade level, on their hallway. Because the way our school is designed is each grade level has their own hallway. Mm -hmm. And then my class is a connections class and we're kind of spread throughout two different hallways. Got and it. so they kind of hold each other accountable on their grade level, our PBS team, mem team members. And uh, we also had trivia too so tell me about trivia that sounds fun <laughs> our trivia was so we have for pbis we do you have to do a, an official walkthrough uh, yeah, yeah where you know they basically quiz the students on do they know the expectations you know sure Love you have it. all these lovely posters up but do they really know what the expectations are so we this month we've done our trivia so two times a week 
Um, there has been a form posted in Google Classroom that one of our PBIS team med members does. Ms. Jackson, she yeah. created that form and um, it was, what is a rule for the restroom? Which one is the right expectations for the restroom? And what is your recommendation for if we were to add a rule or mm. take one out, what you know, what would you add? What would you say? Student voice, getting yeah. them thinking about it. And giving them an yeah. option to say, look, you know, one of the ones, and she shares these funny results with us. So one of them <laughs> was for the hallway expectations. One, a couple students said, walk with purpose. Walk like you've got somewhere to be. <laughs> was, Thank you. <laughs> I agree. Yes, walk with purpose. Oh, I love that. I mean, that's so much better than like, I don't know. Yeah, don't dally yeah, in the hallway or something. Yeah, it's there, no it's like really, it's it's in a student's <laughs> voice, you know what I mean? Which is so cool. Yes. That's been, you know, it's been great to see over the last couple couple of months, you know, since January and where we've refocused yep. our attention um, to see our team come together and the students get excited about, you know, just being part of something, you know, yeah. and I think, I, I think sometimes we, we forget that middle schoolers are kids too. Mm -hmm. And they love incentives and they love to be told they're doing a great job and they love to be part of something. Yeah. So it's great that we're able to give them something positive to be part of versus, yeah. you know, the typical crazy middle school <laughs> <laughs> things that they can be a part of. So those those PBIS trivia, um, is that every month it comes around or once? So it's, we honestly, it was a brand new thing we started this month. No and, way. Who came um, up with that? That's like um, ending. That's such a great yeah, idea. We, we, we have our monthly meetings and we are sitting there thinking, we're like, how do we get, how do we ensure that our students and teachers are having these conversations? Yes. Like, yeah. what is a good way that we can really foster those conversations? Yep. And without without forcing yeah. it or policing it in a way, like how do we make it so that make it fun, make it engaging, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And so we said, uh, what Miss Jackson, she was like, "What do you think about trivia?" And we're like, "Sure." <laughs> you know, we all kind of looked at each other. We're like, "Yeah." Well, I mean, <laughs> at this point, we're just like, you know what? You're not going to know until you try it. So yeah, yeah. if it you fails. Can even they're uh -huh. not going to make a difference. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, props to Miss Jackson. It's such a creative idea. And I, I hope someone listening on the pod tries it at their school too, because it's, it is always with, you know, expectations. It's kind of like rules and how do you make them more fun and engaging? It's a great way to do it and not just throwing an idea out there. You could even do like, um, you know, maybe a raffle for all the kids who get a perfect score on the quiz or something. Yes. And, like and that's what they off. did. They, really? they got perfect, yeah. So if they got a perfect score and they get them all right, their names went into like a, a raffle, like a wheel uh -huh. and spun the wheel and they, you know, whoever. Well, if, you have, them, they if, if you have an opening on your PBIS committee, I think I'm ready to, to join. You are too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fit right in. <laughs> yeah, fit right in. I love that. It. It's so creative. So actually PBIS trivia plus a raffle. So yes. you're actually getting some positive fun incentive in there for for the students that's so cool and you mentioned something that really caught my ear that you're yes you're awarding points in live school which of course you know i'm from live school so we love that but you are also giving that verbal specific praise to students can you talk more about that because i think this is something sometimes people miss it's like just Putting a point in an app is not not the no, whole picture. because it, a lot of the times the students don't know that they even got a point, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, and I honestly, what I think helped our school the most with that is when we when we got on board with Lab School, we didn't we didn't start the year off with mm. Lab School. It's like they did a very we did a very soft rule. I think I think our district purchased it or a school purchased it, um, but they didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. Because we wanted to only focus on, there are like a handful of us that knew we had this coming, but we weren't really allowed to talk about it because we wanted teachers to only focus on positive verbal acknowledgement. Mm. You know, and we said, you know what, let's, sure, we could roll this out, but no, like PBIS was already a new thing for our school. We didn't want to um, throw more at teachers during you know, pre-planning and everything yep. else with everything being new, but we also wanted to encourage that relationship building portion of things. Yep. And so we wanted our teachers to have those conversations. We wanted us all to be part of those conversations. And so that's why when we were building those expectations, we were like, well, what's realistic, 
right? Nowhere on our expectations does it say be quiet in the hallway or be silent in the hallway because we know that that's an unrealistic expectation. So we're like just appropriate language. You know, just make sure yep. the language is is school appropriate. It can and be a little loud, but just make sure it's appropriate. That's right. As long as you're not, you know, using your colorful language, we're yep. good. You know, yep. as long as yep. it's G rated, PG, yep. maybe, you know, yep. and really encouraging that portion of it before we rolled out the hey, we have a point system. It's now. so smart. It's a really smart approach. I'm just noticing like a couple things you've shared from what you all are doing, just the word that's coming to mind is very pragmatic, like the the monthly focus areas. That's so it's so practical and pragmatic to just have people focus on one thing, you know, and then that rollout approach. It seems like that's really some. And then the rubric, too, like not putting things on there that sure there might be teachers who say, well, we just, you know, we want right. students right. to. Uh, be silent in the hallway. Well, you might want that, but that's just yeah, never yeah. going to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. You might tell them to catch their bubble before they walk out in the hallway. But realistically, when there's so many and we transition as a whole school, mm -hmm. so, you know, that is over 700 students yeah. in the hallway at the same time. And sure, they're on their they're on their grade level hallway, with the exception of if they're going to connections, but it's just a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it is. that's just an unrealistic ask. That, yeah. you know, yeah. now, now my, my particular classroom, they know that if we leave my classroom while class is in session, they know that they better catch their bubble. Yeah. You know? and, and so and they, they laugh at me. I'm like, catch it, catch the bubble. <laughs> catch it. Where is it? Yes. That whole just approach of being, you know, really thoughtful and realistic and thinking about how to make it practical for for teachers, but also engaging for students. Yes. Is it all coming from your committee? Mm -hmm. You all just kind of see eye to eye and you've found we a third level. That's so cool. We do. And when we don't, you know, because we have a lot of, of um, discussion even around, we have that feature where you can deduct points. Yeah. You know, and we don't use that. We are mm -hmm. we mark the demerit, but we don't take the points away. And one of the reasons why we don't take them away is like you earned that point. Like you made the right decision and you earned that point. Yep. Whatever it was. Yep. You know, doing something else doesn't take away the fact that you just did an unbelievably wonderful thing. Yep. And so we don't have it to where with our group of students, it just wouldn't work. Yeah. Our students would not be as motivated to earn points mm -hmm. if we took that away from them because for a lot of our kids, they work so hard to kind of undo what they're exposed to every day. And that it, it just, we didn't want that to be a source for them to not try. Yeah, that's you awesome. Know? And it, it definitely comes through how, I guess, just thoughtful your committee is and like thinking through how to approach things, how to make sure it fits for your students. It's, it's really awesome. When it comes to the data side of things, um, ha have you been able to, you know, really use some of the data that you're that you're collecting and, and what kinds of decisions or impacts or discussions, you know, is it is it leading to? Yeah, so we um, I, I pull all the all the reports for all of our all of our things. Um, so with lab school and we pull I pull like the insight report mm -hmm. um, and especially when we're doing our monthly focus, it's really easy for me to be able to sort through and filter those sure. results and see yeah. who's doing what, um, you know, for us last year and even starting now this year, since now we're in month in the middle of month three of mm -hmm. us really kind of reinvigorating, let's get on board, get back in the practice. We've been pulling those teacher reports just to see how many of our teachers are signing into that system, sure. how many, and then, and then really it's not, that's not my responsibility to have those conversations with the teachers of, Hey, this is what we need to do, but it gives us an idea of, is there a specific grade level that let's say our sixth grade, Team. Let's say maybe they're not doing great at, they are doing great at awarding points, but let's say they're not doing great. Let's, at not, points. Yeah. let's just use them as an example. And then we see six grade behavior. Now look at our other system and our behavior referrals are off the chain for sixth grade. Mm. Is there a correlation there? Yeah. Between yeah. they're not getting in, they're not getting rewarded or they're not having those conversations with their teachers about the things that they're doing great. 
and their behavior is escalating. Right. So, and then if you look at a grade level that maybe their, their teachers are more proactive about having those conversations and awarding the points and, and acknowledging that they're doing the right thing, is that grade level experiencing lesser referrals? So yeah. it's kind of hard in both systems to overlay it, but you can tell over time, like, where those inconsistencies are and also which teachers, you know, I mean, not to zero in or call anybody out, but you can see which teachers have a high frequency of referrals and zero usage of having, because you think, well, if you're not having the, if you're not awarding life school points, you probably aren't having the conversation. So, you know, and you can see that there's, there's a relationship there. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I'd love to ask a couple bigger, bigger picture questions to, to wrap up. So one is, I, I always love asking people this, uh, it's a yeah. debate in education kind of between intrinsic and extrinsic mm-hmm. motivation. Uh, and especially I'm curious, just given some of what you've shared about like your students and some of the challenges they, they face and the systems you're trying to put in place to support them. Um, what have you kind of come to believe as an educator about I don't know that maybe the balance between them or the contrast between them, like how, how do you think about it when you're working with students? Yeah. So that one's been a hard one for me. I will be honest with you um, because I have always been very intrinsically motivated. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, um, I never really look at what I'm going to get out of it, you know, mm-hmm. from somebody else. It's always been, well, I want to do this because I want to say that I've accomplished it or I want to yeah. do better at this. And so I've always been my own driver for those things. Um, what I'm noticing is not a lot of kids work that way. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of students, um, and I don't know if it's the generation. I don't know if it's because they live in this world now where it's constant instant gratification. There's constant, you know, that brain study where it's the, that reward center of the brain is sure. constantly being activated. And so they have to have that immediate reward in order for that almost justification that they're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. That if there's a lag time, you know, it's, it's meaningless. Mm-hmm. Almost. And so with our kids, they need that immediate feedback. They just do. They, they are, a lot of our students struggle with that internal motivation, that internal driver. Um, a lot of our students don't really know what success looks like and don't really know how to achieve it, where to, where to start. Um, and so giving them something where it's immediate and they can see that they've done a good job at something and it's just, there's no lag time that helps keep them motivated. Mm. But it's just, like I said, I I don't know if it's a generational thing, if it's a demographic thing. I I like to think it's probably a generational thing. You know, I mean, I was born in 1978. So, you know, I'm, I'm just built different. You know, they say those kids that survived the eighties, we're just built different, you know, (laughs) like. (laughs) Totally. Totally. And I mean, everyone's got, you know, personality varies from person to person. And I do agree with you. I think generation and, and even post COVID, I mean, I think probably oh, has played some role, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I do think um, the, the gaps, just the, the social gaps in general, I mean, not yeah. even talk academic gaps, social gaps. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these kids, that was a very crucial, critical time that we shut down. Yeah. for them and their yeah. in their cognitive development and their learning development, all of the things. Sure. Um, so I, I do wonder how how long till they start closing these gaps. Well ho- hopefully over time, I mean certainly we hope, you know, our lives yeah. will like as you're you're you know showing them where to start to use yes. your words. I really like the way you put it that, you know, students are able to start to develop like, oh, I like the feeling of you know, when, when I know how, how to achieve something like and, and start to cultivate that internal drive, because I, I totally agree with you. I think that's a huge part of life. And it's, you know, it's, it's of course, a balance. Um, last question I had for you, if there was a billboard that you could put up uh, that other PBIS coaches would see on the way to work, is there anything you've um, learned that has kind of been helpful for you and your team that you would share? The only thing that comes to mind is just like baby steps. Mm. You know, I mean, it is, it is really baby steps and embracing those small victories that successes aren't always huge, ginormous flashing, you know, blinking signs and these great events like success is 
having our kids fill out our form for trivia, you know, having, you know, a student want, like I had a student help me with newspapers yesterday and he just, he wanted, he genuinely wanted to help me with the newspapers yesterday. Nice. And, and it's those things that you see and they don't happen every day. They don't happen all at once, but it's baby steps and learning to find those little moments where things are working. I think that's a great message. And especially when you're trying to create change across, you know, in your case, 700 students and all your staff, like things build on each other and you got to keep making progress bit by bit. And then eventually, hopefully you look up after a while, you go, wow, like we are in a totally different place than we were at the, at the beginning. So, um, well, amazing. Thank you so much. I know uh, your <laughs> planning period with you. That's so okay. Nice I was able to start on my lunch earlier, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, but thank you so much. It's really awesome to hear what you all have, have been up to. And um, yeah, just really excited to be partnering with your team. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed it.